So you just got a brand new shiny ROG Ally X. Let's take a look at a few of the things that you can do in order to make your experience better than it is out of the box. And if you know some really cool tips or tricks that I left out, share them in the comment section down below that like button and I might make a video about those as well. Keep in mind that nearly all of these tips and tricks should work as well on the 2023 version of the ROG Ally. If something is exclusive to the Ally X, I will put this symbol on the screen while I talk about it. If that sounds good, get comfortable, get subscribed, and let's get started. For many people, they have a vast majority of the PC games that they own on Steam. And because of that, a lot of people will want to launch those games directly from Steam. If you're more comfortable with the Steam input, you might be confused as to why Gyro on the ROG Ally X doesn't seem to work out of the box. Well, there is a reason for this. You see, Steam Input doesn't recognize the Ally X as its own device. To Steam Input, the Ally X just looks like an Xbox controller, which I'm sure that you know, doesn't have gyro. But there is actually a gyro sensor in the Ally X. So how do you actually use it? Well, in order to use it, you have to go through Armory Crate. Armory Crate is the launcher that comes with the ROG Ally and the X. And while it isn't my preferred way to launch games, you will be missing out on some features of the ROG Ally and Ally X if you don't use it. In order to use Gyro on Ally systems, you launch Armory Crate, and then you go to the game that you want to use it in. Press X, and then Set Game Profile. Once that comes up, you can use the D-pad to tab down to Gyro, and here you can turn it on. You can set it to be seen by the game as a mouse or by a thumbstick. For most games, I recommend that you um, use mouse for the settings. It's just more accurate. But for any game that doesn't allow simultaneous mouse and gamepad inputs, you'll have to set it as the right stick. Most of the time, I just don't use it if that's the case. By default, if you've activated gyro, it stays on all the time, but you might want to change this behavior. So scroll down to the control section and set your gyro enabled to be your preferred input. I like to use the left trigger so that if I'm playing a shooter and I aim down sights, gyro kicks in and makes precise aiming really easy. You can also have your gyro respond to combined yaw and roll by default or one or the other. I prefer the default method. The ROG Ally X comes with a 65 watt charger. The first thing that you should do with that charger is absolutely nothing. Throw it in a drawer someplace and get a new charger. I recommend chargers from Ugreen. They're the sponsor for this video. This is the Ugreen Nexode Pro 100 watt charger. It's small, it's light, it has foldable prongs, it has a fast charger that provides 100 watts of dedicated charging power to a single port, which is fantastic because the Ally X can accept up to 100 watts of power. But if you're not in a hurry, you can also charge up to three devices at once, including the Ally X, a tablet, a phone, and thanks to their new generation of GAN technology, you get faster charging, and it only takes 27 minutes to charge a MacBook Pro 14 inch from zero to 50% with a single USB-C one. So if you wanna keep all of your tech topped off, then you can check out the link in the description down below that like button. And a big thanks to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. Armory Crate is mostly fine out of the box. I still prefer Steam's big picture mode, but if you're going to use Armory Crate, we might as well do what we can to make it our own. If you press the view button, it brings up the manage library menu. This will allow you to change how your library is sorted as well as customize what your library looks like. You can set it to scroll vertically or horizontally. You can change how big the cover art is because this will allow you to either see more of the games at once or you can really showcase what the art is. You can toggle showing the game title, which is almost always in the cover art anyway, so I tend to turn this setting off so it's not on there twice. You can have the cover art shown behind the games that you've got, whether uh, for whatever game you have selected, or you can just have it be blanket back there. And you can change how much that image is blurred or darkened depending on your preferences. It really makes it easier for you to make sure that the Armory Crate looks the way that you like it to. 
By default, the ROG Ally X has a mode turned on called CPU Boost. Basically, CPU Boost dynamically increases the CPU clock speed when the system thinks that you need it. Sounds great. But honestly, this really chews through the battery and doesn't give you much more in, in terms of performance. It really shouldn't be used 99% of the time. So if you go into Armory Crate and then the gear icon on the top, then performance, then down to Eco Assist, you can turn CPU boost off right there. You also have the ability to add that to the Command Center menu. The Command Center menu is the small menu that pops up when you press the button that is on the left side of the screen, just below the View button. To add the CPU boost to this menu, back out of the Performance menu, and then on the right side of the screen, you can see all of your Command Center buttons that you currently have selected. If you find a blank spot, you can click the Add button, and then you can add whatever tools that you tend to use the most often in this menu, including CPU Boost, so you can turn it on and off at will. So if you're playing a game that's CPU bound, like say emulating PS3 games, you can turn it on quickly. Speaking of emulation, Get EmuDeck. Originally developed for the Steam Deck, EmuDeck is a series of scripts that automatically downloads and configures just about any emulator that you're going to need so that you can get all of those nostalgia goosebumps. You guys know the ones that I'm talking about? Those games that you played when you were a kid and when you, you, when you hear the music or see the graphics, you're just transported back to a simpler time, sitting on the floor in front of a 300 pound TV, the wires were short and you were right up on that thing. You can feel the static coming off the screen. You can take a sip of Coke out of the glass bottle. And mom says that it's dinner time. So you have to, you have to get Link killed so that you can save your game. She doesn't understand that you have two full rows of hearts and that you're trying to save your game by getting hit by a moblin over and over and over again. The smell of the TV dinners is wafting through the room. I got carried away there for a second. EmuDeck sets everything up so that you don't have to. All you have to do is put your ROMs in the right folders. Now, you might ask, where could I find such ROMs? To which I reply, that's a good question. Once you have all of the ROMs in the right folders, all you have to do is follow the prompts and launch your games through Emulation Station Desktop Edition, which will be in Steam. But there's something that you can do with the ROG Ally X that most handhelds can't do, and that is Black Frame Insertion, or BFI for short. For those of you that don't know what black frame insertion is, let me explain. And if you already know, stick around because I won't take very long and I want you to make sure that I get it right. Your screen has the ability to refresh up to 120 times per second. That's what we call the refresh rate. Many retro games run at 60 frames per second, which is exactly half the refresh rate of the screen. By turning on black frame insertion, what happens is your game inserts a black frame every other frame. So basically you get a real frame and then a black frame and then the next real frame. This eliminates some of the motion blur that can you can experience on non-CRT systems. It makes your retro games look really crisp. Of course, this also makes your game a little bit darker because of the inserted black frames. So you have to increase the brightness of the screen. But thanks to the massive 80 watt hour battery in the Ally X, you'll still be able to play for hours and hours and hours. On top of that, you can also turn on filters to mimic CRT screens we played on when we were kids. Well, I mean, if you're old like me anyway. Okay, enough nostalgia, let's move on to the next tip. Moving back to Armory Crate, did you know that you can change your game art? It's actually really easy. You don't have to have any mods installed. All you have to do is press the Armory Crate button, which is to the right of the screen, just below the menu button. Once you have Armory Crate on screen, pick a game and then press X, just like we did earlier. Only this time, instead of going into the set game profile, you're gonna head down to game info. You have the ability to choose from multiple pieces of game art that are automatically downloaded with your game, or you can add your own. I suggest making a folder with all of your favorite game art. Now, you might wonder, where can you get this game art? My go-to place is IGDB.com, or the Internet Games Database. 
search for the game that you want, head down to the media tab, and you can find all kinds of screenshots there. Many of these screenshots will be a WebP file. When you download it, right click save as and change the name of the files to JPEG. Then navigate to that file and add the button wherever it is that you uh, put that, and then you'll have your custom art. You can even edit the custom art in order to change the focus of it. You can zoom in on a picture in order to just focus on one part. It's really cool that you can do this and you didn't even have to download a plugin in order to do it. Now, because we're making a bunch of adjustments to the to the games on our on our ROG Ally, I don't want to have to remember which setting that I've selected for each game. So let's make Armory Crate remember all of that stuff for us. Select a game in Armory Crate, press X again, and then set the game profile. Here's where you can adjust your key mapping. You can uh, how you activate gyro, like I showed you earlier. You can also adjust your stick and trigger sensitivity, but more importantly, really, really cool, in the configuration menu, you can change your operating mode when plugged in, when on battery, how your RGB lights are going to work, your game visual, how the screen looks like, and your GPU settings. Operating modes are the TDP modes that typically adjust in the command center. There's five modes. There's silent, which operates on 10 watts on the ROG Ally and 13 watts on the X. Performance mode, which is 15 watts on the Ally and 17 watts on the X. And then turbo mode, which operates at 25 watts on the Ally and on the X. The fourth mode shows up uh, at 30 watts when you plug in the Ally or the X, and it's the same for both of them. And then finally, the fifth mode is manual mode, where you decide how much power you're going to use. So if you're playing a game that needs a lot of horsepower and you don't want to have to remember to change it every time that you, you know, launch a game, all you have to do is set the game to switch to the 17 watt, uh, watt performance mode, and if you're on battery, the 30 watt turbo mode when you plug your ally in. In this same menu, you can adjust your RGB colors on a per game basis. It can sync with other devices, but I don't have any other devices that actually work with that, so I can't really test it. But if you want, you can always you can set a game to always have like a certain color around the sticks when you're playing Cyberpunk, for example. You can also change your game visual here. Game visual allows you to change how the screen looks depending on the game that you're playing. They have settings for first person shooter, for racing and more, and I have to completely admit, I never use this feature, but I do like that this is on a game by game basis. One thing that isn't on a game by game basis that I really wish was is CPU boost. This is something I'd really like to see in the future because let's say I'm emulating some PS3 games and I turn on CPU boost in order to make it so that those games run a little bit better. And then I forget to turn off CPU boost. Well, then the next time that I play, we'll say Animal Well, for example, I'm gonna chew through my battery really, really quickly. And I never had to actually have CPU boost on for that. So if Asus would make it so that CPU boost is remembered on a game by game basis, then when I launch some other game that is CPU bound, you know, and I use CPU boost, and then I launch a different game, I don't have to worry about turning CPU boost on and off because you're probably not going to notice that it's turned on because the performance really isn't all that different. But you'll absolutely notice if you haven't turned it on because, you know, the games that really need it do really need it. Because the Ally systems run Windows, you're going to want to know a few quick shortcuts that are going to make your life easier. These work with the M buttons that are on the back of the system. If you combo either M button with a D-pad up, this is going to bring up your virtual keyboard, which is great because sometimes I tap in a text field in Windows or on the web and the keyboard doesn't pop up for whatever reason. If a game is hanging and you need to kill it for whatever reason, the task manager is the M button and down on the D-pad. M button and menu uh, or the start button will open up voice typing. So if you're sending a uh, quick message to friends on Discord, you can avoid the keyboard altogether, which is awesome. Since we're talking about Windows functions, you can also adjust how Windows interprets your taps in Explorer. Having used Windows for years and years, I'm used to double clicking on things to open something. Windows 11 does single taps with the touchscreen, which is very unintuitive for somebody who's used it for years. So if you want to change that, 
open File Explorer and click the triple dot button in the upper right hand side of the toolbar. Then choose Options. Under Folder Options, select double click and uh, to open and then uh, hit Apply. When you first set up your ROG Ally or Ally X, you'll probably scan a fingerprint to unlock Windows Hello. Well, if you want to add other fingers in order to either share the device with someone or allow you to unlock it with another, whatever finger you want, simply click Start and then Settings. Press the macro button and up to bring up your keyboard and then type Hello. Then click on Setup Fingerprint to sign in. Here you can add a bunch of different fingers to Windows Hello, make your life a whole bunch easier. While we're in the settings, I like to keep my screen to just stay on until I tell it to shut off. Sometimes I get stuck in a game and I set my ally down to look at my phone. When I'm looking, I don't want the screen to go to sleep. So under System and then Power and then Screen and then Sleep, set everything to Never and then the system only turns off when I tell it to, but you can customize it however you want. That's just how I do it. But maybe you don't want to use Windows at all. Perhaps like me, you are a fan of SteamOS. Valve promised to ship SteamOS for other hardware, but I got to be honest, I'm sick of waiting for them, which is why I bought a massive four terabyte 2280 drive. Link in the description down below. I installed it. It was very simple, literally just seven screws to do this. Once you've got the new drive in, or you can do it with the drive that comes with it, then download Bazite. Flash it to a USB, decrypt your drive so that BitLocker is no longer turned on anymore. Turn off Secure Boot on the ROG Ally in the BIOS, then boot from the USB drive. If you want to do this, I suggest you use the written guide that I've linked down below that like button. It takes you through the entire process. Just make sure that you have a USB drive and a physical keyboard to make this easier. It's not a difficult process, but it's time consuming. It'll take you a few hours probably. Once it was done, it makes the Ally X seem like a Steam Deck. Games perform pretty much identical on both operating systems, but there are a few things to look out for. Number one is handheld daemon. This allows you to control some things that are specific to the Ally or Ally X. So you can tell Steam to pretend that it is a DualSense Edge controller, which gives you access to the back buttons as well as gyro. If you're looking for an entire guide on using Bazite uh, um, on your Ally or Ally X, let me know. I may make a video about it. And speaking of videos, if you enjoyed this video, you should probably check out this video uh, right, right over here. Uh, YouTube seems to think you'll like it for whatever reason. From the Nerd Nest, I'm Bill. Thanks for watching. Stay rad.